श्री भगवान वाचा भूय एव महाबाहो शुणु मे परम वच यम प्रियमाणाय वक्षा हित काम्य The supreme person who got it said, "Listen again, O mighty Amda Arjuna, because you are my dear friend. For your benefit, I shall speak to you further, giving knowledge that is better than what I have already explained." Seventh, eighth, ninth chapters are already talking about pure devotional service, about Purushottama, uh, about Krishna, about devotional service, pure devotional service. Hmm. So, tenth chapter will go further about Krishna's opulence. Uh, so, the word Bhagavan is explained thus by Parashara Muni, one who is full in six opulences, who is full strength, full fame, wealth, knowledge, beauty, and renunciation is Bhagavan. Our supreme person got it. But Krishna was present on this earth; he displayed all six opulences. Therefore, great sages like Parashara Muni have all accepted Krishna as the supreme person. Have got it. Now Krishna is instructing Arjuna in more confidential knowledge of his opulences and his work. Previously, beginning with the seventh chapter, the Lord has already explained his different energies and how they are acting. Now, in this chapter, he explains his specific opulences to Arjuna. In the previous chapter, he has clearly explained his different energies to establish devotion in firm conviction. Again, in this chapter, he tells Arjuna about his manifestations and various opulences. The more one hears about the supreme God, the more one becomes fixed in devotional service. One should always hear about the Lord in the association of devotees, no? preferably devotees. It's better than reading alone. I have seen it myself, personal experience. That will enhance one's devotional service. discourses in the society of devotees can take place only among those who are really anxious to be in krishna consciousness mm, so those who are joining every day every what a monday wednesday friday to read propas purports because that is hearing from a pure devotee so we are all really anxious to be in krishna conscious otherwise why would he spend this valuable time here others cannot take part in such discourses the lord clearly tells arjuna that because arjuna is very dear to him for his benefit such discourses are taking place so we can literally think about this as well in our context as well because we are all we are dear to the lord because we are trying to understand him so he creates platform for us that you know we can all make progress and really trying to nicely understand propas purport is the best thing that can happen to us and because it will actually give us real deep insight into bhakti but like i keep encouraging you know when we are reading the purport if you don't understand anything please don't think that oh what will others think if you are so if you are reluctant to ask then you can put it on chat you know and i can answer it without revealing who it is but the whole point is that we have to become inquisitive we have to contemplate on the each and every line that we read to understand to see if you know you actually understood it and another thing that i used to tell when initially when we started is the verses that we read in the session you know it might also be a good idea for you to read them after the session and see if you know you are getting any other understanding or maybe some other realization coming or maybe some other question is coming so you know that is when that is how we hear more about the supreme god and the same bhagavad gita you would have read multiple times before but every time we read we get some new understanding because bhagavad gita is bottomless unfathomable ananta just like the lord his instructions are non different huh? so propad is revealing the instructions but propad what propad is revealing also becomes deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and so feel free to ask questions because that's when that's how we can go deep into the subject in point 2 namay vidusuragana prabhavam na maharshaya 
अहम माधिर्देवानाम महर्षीणाम च सर्वशः neither the hosts of demigods nor the great sages know my origin or opulences for in every respect i am the source of the demigods and sages well when we read some statements like this we will keep wondering okay do we then do we know krishna mm mm-hmm. mm-hmm. brahma got bewildered indra got bewildered and great sages got bewildered what about us yes we would have also been bewildered but because we have come to the shelter of shila prabhupad who is a pure devotee we are not bewildered in the sense that we know krishna's position just that we don't have i mean it's just a lack of faith but not so much about lack of knowledge about krishna's position hmm we can very clearly get an understanding of what krishna is because shila prabhupad has so mercifully revealed the secrets but even sages and demigods get bewildered as stated in the brahma samhita lord krishna is the supreme lord none is greater than him he is the cause of all causes here it is also stated by the lord personally that he is the cause of all demigods and sages even the demigods and great sages cannot understand krishna they can understand neither his name nor his personality So, what is the position of the so-called scholars of this tiny planet? Prabhupada is clearly saying, if you are just a simply a scholar, you cannot understand because big, big scholars, big, big sages are really big, big scholars. They can't understand. No one can understand why the supreme God comes to the earth as an ordinary human being and executes such wonderful, uncommon activities. One should know then that scholarship is not the qualification necessary to understand Krishna. Even demigods and great sages have tried to understand Krishna by their mental speculation. They have failed to do so. In Bhagavatam also it is clearly stated that even great demigods are not able to understand the Supreme Person of Godhead. They can speculate to the limits of their imperfect senses and can reach the opposite conclusion of impersonalism, of something not manifested by the three qualities of material nature. The opposite conclusion of impersonalism i mean this is difficult to understand what propad wants to say here but uh, one way of thinking about it is saying that you know they can reach personalism hmm, um uh, but they but it is not possible to understand krishna they might even if somebody comes to think of Krish, of supreme lord as person still they cannot understand krishna they can maybe understand vishnu but they cannot understand krishna hmm. um yeah but it's it's a bit unclear to me what opposite conclusion of impersonalism means uh, because saying by speculation they can uh, still uh, maybe come to that platform by speculation but they cannot understand krishna by such foolish speculation hmm, hmm. Here the Lord indirectly says that if anyone wants to know the absolute truth, here I am present as the Supreme Person of Godhead. I am the Supreme. One should know this. Although one cannot understand the inconceivable Lord who is personally present, He nonetheless exists. You can actually understand Krishna who is eternal, full of bliss and knowledge simply by studying His words in Bhagavad Gita and Bhagavatam, not simply reading. Hmm. So we have to study Bhagavad Gita. We have to study Bhagavatam. Now, what does study mean? Okay, I'm going to touch about that at the end after this purport. The conception of God as some ruling power or as the impersonal Brahman can be reached by persons who are in the inferior energy of the Lord, but the personality of God it can be conceived unless cannot be conceived unless one is in the transcendental position. So one can come to this uh, saying that you know he is uh, some energy, uh, impersonal Brahman, all that, but personality this is power but this is personality this personality cannot be conceived unless one is in the transcendental position or one is guided by somebody who is in the transcendental position which is a pure devotee which is shila propat because most men cannot understand krishna in his actual position out of his causeless mercy descends to show favor to such speculators yet despite the supreme lord's uncommon activities these speculators due to contamination in the material energy still think that the impersonal 
Brahman is the Supreme. Only the devotees who are fully surrendered unto the Supreme Lord can understand by the grace of Supreme Personality that He is Krishna. So even here, trying to understand Krishna cannot happen independently. It is only by the grace of Supreme Lord that we can understand Him. The devotees of the Lord do not bother about the impersonal Brahman conception of God. Their faith and devotion bring them to surrender immediately unto the Supreme Lord. And out of the causeless mercy of Krishna, they can understand Krishna. So we cannot understand Krishna by our efforts. We can understand him only by causeless mercy of Guru and Krishna himself. No one else can understand him. So even great sages agree. What is Atma? What is Supreme? It is who he whom we have to worship. So we have to worship him. Who is him? It is not it whom we have to worship, which we have to worship. It is he whom we have to worship. So he's a person. So understanding all these personal aspects, personal aspects uh, can be only understood uh, under the guidance of a pure devotee of the Lord. Okay, so now studying his words. So I want to just share something. I want to show what it is means to study. Uh, I'm going to share my notes here. Not that this is ideal, but this can give us some sense of how we can read Bhagavad Gita. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing this and share this. Okay, so this is some notes that I have for Bhagavad Gita. So I want to show something. Okay, see, when we read Bhagavad Gita, the way we have to read Bhagavad Gita is that we have to make notes, generally. Now, if you see here, there are three colors or two colors and two shades, right? One, there is normal, then there is bold, and then there is orange. Okay? So, this is just information which might be good to have from a preaching perspective or just from a knowledge perspective. Okay. Uh, this, the ones in bold are important when we talk to people, meaning uh, this is mainly for preaching. The other one could be information, but may or may not be useful or may not be used for preaching. But the one in bold is definitely something that we should use in preaching. Now, the one in orange is for personal application, right? So, for example, here, for you to understand, one who takes shelter of the Supreme Lord has nothing to fear, even in the midst of the greatest calamity. Now, this is personal application. But, say, living entities are part and parcel of human, therefore, the senses of living entities are also part and parcel of his, his senses. Now, this is for preaching, to say that, you know, how we should not try to enjoy our senses. Uh, he, this is also for personal application, but it depends on what stage we are in. If we are already applying, if you have already applied this, then, you know, maybe you will, somebody else might make it orange. Uh, somebody else might, black means for me, yeah, you know, um, okay, I, maybe tr I've already, I know this and I'm trying to implement this in my life. Uh, so then I can use that to tell others. But that in orange means that I myself have not been able to apply or I'm still very, actively trying to apply this. So like this, when we read Bhagavad Gita, we have to make notes. And primarily first time, what I would suggest everybody is first time focus on only personal application. Hmm. You might also have some pieces of knowledge that you might want to note, but most important is personal application. Hmm. And in this personal application, for example, in my notes, I also like to highlight Krishna's personality and how Krishna is Bhakta Vatsala and, you know, aspects about Krishna that Prabhupada has written in the purports. That also is something that I want to meditate on. So then I mark those also in orange. So basically the idea is you can have your own style of making notes, but we should study Bhagavad Gita, not read Bhagavad Gita. Read means like a story. We might just read and uh, orally just you know take a open the book and start reading for some time and then uh, we're done but that's not going to help us actually meditate on Krishna uh, or on these instructions so for that it's good to make notes 
uh, you may be more you know you may you might like to make offline notes whatever you prefer that is not important but the important thing is that you should make and also don't of course i mean first time when i started making notes literally i had to i i had rewritten the whole of bhagavad gita um yeah saving everything but that is only initially uh, when you start reading again and again then you realize you you make it finer and finer and finer um, but it's okay i mean even say initially um, in fact also what i recommend is writing than copy paste because this this still doesn't give us absorption because we are simply copy pasting something onto another document but if we write we are actually meditating on each and every word we are writing right uh, so it generally helps um uh, otherwise even if you are doing online uh, many a times i like to not copy paste but to type explicitly uh, so that you know when we are typing we think about what we are typing um anyway those are finer things but whole point is that we should study uh, what we are trying to do here is more understanding every statement of bhagavad gita but your own personal study should also happen where you should you know make solid notes and with focus focus on personal application like i said otherwise pretty much you you will be copying the whole purports as they are so you read a purport and see what is it in what is in it for me as in what is the application for me how, how uh, is this something relevant for me sometimes some things are way ahead right like very advanced uh, which we can't understand like for example maybe there's some discussion about madhurya bhava or something rasa and all that maybe we don't understand it yet then it's okay we don't worry too much about it it's not our for our current application so focus on current application hmm. Mm. and that is why we should never stop reading bhagavad gita because we will be in stage 1 then we'll slowly move to stage 2 so now new things we have to be focus on then we move to stage 3 then some more new things we have to focus on so and bhagavad gita has stuff for n number of stages right so we keep reading we keep picking up new stuff for implement for personal application and that's how we will change our life as well um you know when we apply things in our life only then we can we will change our life otherwise if you are simply hearing and leaving and forgetting then it will not be much useful okay so i'll stop there and uh, this one has any questions yeah one question um uh, previous verse manmana bhav mat bhakto some devotees try to make krishna's pastimes using cartoons you remember krishna in the cartoon pics help the children or any others in general i'm sure it helps but uh, you know just that see basically uh, guru maharaj bhakti vikas maharaj has very clearly said saying that krishna is not the way he is there so you know we should not get carried away by that Uh, it can be used to you know introduce children um, you know many a times sometimes i also watch that because it helps me to remember the past times and then i also see that uh, you know they have presented a lot of things wrongly a little krishna has lot of uh, you know i don't know where they have taken uh, but it doesn't seem to be from specifically from any of the scriptures i have read so far so some masala seems to have been added as well so it's not like really pakka uh, it's not like shrimad bhagavatam's presentation so that way it's not a good idea um so in fact we, we which is why you know krishna book is a good way um but yeah for children cartoons are more engaging uh, i should admit i mean i also sometimes like to watch this because they've done it well just that uh, we should also be clear that it's not fully accurate and we don't uh, actually want to think about krishna as a cartoon mm. um but yeah but if it is just temporarily helping uh, us to become more krishna conscious the right way then it's okay but not the not not the ideal ideal is to read and you know meditate that is actually what is required mananam 
నిధి ధ్యాసనం సో ఫర్ దిస్ ఎస్ అన్ ఆల్టర్నేటివ్ ఐ సజెస్ట్ రీడింగ్ పర్పర్ట్ రీడింగ్ ట్రాన్స్లేషన్స్ వితౌట్ పర్పర్ట్ అండ్ ఆఫ్ టెన్త్ క్యాంటో రైట్ సో ఫర్ విచ్ వీ షుడ్ హ్ ఫినిష్ ఆల్ ద నైన్ క్యాంటోస్ దెన్ వీ కెన్ రీడ్ ట్రాన్స్లేషన్స్ ఆఫ్ ద టెన్త్ క్యాంటో వితౌట్ నెసర్లీ రీడింగ్ ద పర్పర్ట్స్ బికాస్ దెన్ ద వీ కెన్ మెడిటేట్ ఆన్ ద లీలా విచ్ యాక్చువల్లీ ఈజ్ వాట్ ఈస్ హ్యాపనింగ్ వెన్ యూ సీ దిస్ కార్టూన్స్ సో ఇట్స్ అ గుడ్ ఐడియా టు కంటిన్యూస్లీ కీప్ రీడింగ్ translations of the 10th canto or krishna book uh, so that you know like my dad my father before he left his body i think he had read, read krishna book some 50 times mm, so he i mean even i i actually i this is amazing uh, realization when he was pretty much on his deathbed he he was like coughing like crazy and he was still he he you know he could not sleep and i was sleeping with him in the hospital and he was like suddenly you know in the night he is saying you know you know this leela and krishna book and this was happening that was happening actually i, I had not thought of thought about it till now and it's amazing i mean this is what is expected right like our consciousness becomes so deeply connected with krishna that irrespective of what our bodily condition is we can just keep thinking about uh, the past times and we should reach that stage absolutely we should reach that stage right so yeah but it requires effort right bhagavad gita bhagavatam word to word um, chaitanya charitamrita nectar of devotion then after we finish this once then we can like i said before we will have two paths one for full purport study the other is for reading only translations now which can be like um, so two paths both have to go on corporate reading has to go on but at the same time we can read the translations and uh, that that should create meditation sometimes i also hear audio books uh, you know he, his only is amal bik bhakti swami maharaj when he was amal bhakt das he had written he had recorded a lot of audio like audio um, audio books mm, so mainly the translations you know and that is also very nicely done dramatically done Uh, that or your own reading something right so that the idea is to become absorbed in the past times but like i said for that you know we have to go through all this reading once and then restart parallelly maybe you know every day sometime for translation just reading translations and not per per so it's a, it's a, it's it's effort but it, it will it reward it's very rewarding and then we also have to read chaitanya bhagavata so i mean there's a lot of work <laughs> there's a lot of work but blissful work uh, provided we have time unfortunately most devotees suffer because of lack of time you know that's where all of us have to focus how do i create time for myself to really you know engage in bliss this is all bliss but no time so please think about it Okay. Hare Krishna Prabhu. I have a question in yeah. that golden line which you have highlighted, right? Hmm. So mostly that fear is that uh, how many such reactions are there which are pending in devotee's life and hmm. it might hit any time, right? So that's, hmm. I think that is one of the prime reasons why uh, I mean, I'm talking about devotees only, right? Hmm. The devotees might fear that uh, how many such reactions are there and that might distract us because whenever such uh, calamities come obviously mind gets disturbed right and uh, the normal thinking uh, where we get absorbed in krishna consciousness will definitely get uh, turbulated so so is that um, so what is the right thinking then in that time because it might be our karma only which is getting fructified and then even though we have shelter krishna might be purifying us by giving us that reaction so with the fear is mostly to have that situation coming again and might uh, taking us away right so what is the ideal thinking which a devotee should have amidst of such calamities that no matter what happens um, we always get we always come out of such situations is that the right thinking or something else తత్తేనుకంపా సుసమీక్షమాణో 
So the right mood is to think that I don't deserve this. I should be suffering more and accepting the suffering. That is the first thing. Not wanting to escape the suffering. Um, that is number one. Number two is having Rakshishatiti Vishwa. So having full faith that Krishna is with us, behind us, protecting us, giving us what is required. Three, actually nothing is taking us away from Krishna. Actually everything is taking us near to Krishna. What it is taking us away from are material things that we are very attached to. And that is where our fear is. Uh, because we are irrationally attached to these material things. So Krishna is not going to take us away from bhakti. <laughs> uh, Krishna will not take us away from bhakti. Krishna will take us away from those things in the material world which are going to keep us away from Krishna. So it's actually extremely auspicious when we are suffering. Uh, but we don't look at it that way because when these things happen, we fall down to the material platform. That is why, you know, this Nididhyasanam, we should keep meditating upon these things. Saying, oh, okay, this is number one. I should have suffered more. Okay. Uh, before that, point zero is I have done some nonsense to some other jiva. And because of which I am suffering now. Why am I being a hypocrite and not wanting to suffer? I did something wrong to somebody. But now I am asking Krishna, say, no, 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 Krishna, okay, I did something wrong to somebody. Krishna is saying, okay, you did some nonsense. Ah, yes, 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 Krishna. But, you know, I don't want to suffer. This is hypocrisy. Uh, this is not uh, this is not sadhu behavior. Sadhu means if you do a mistake, you should be ready to suffer. But we we don't have we so we want to escape the suffering. So that is number one, realizing that we've done something wrong and hence we are suffering. Number two is accepting the situation and not uh, wanting it to end. Uh, you know, uh, so acceptance of the situation. Third is knowing that Krishna is anyway there. Whatever we are suffering, going through, Krishna is there. Krishna wants it to happen and Krishna is overseeing it. Krishna is making is ensuring that we are going to become more purified. Fourth is medit think about those material things that are actually the attachment of which is causing that fear and realize that these are temporary. This is not really what, I mean, this is not what it is for which I should be living. So these four lines of thoughts have to be there constantly. And these things have to be noted. I mean, because for me, I've, I've done this multiple times. I've gone through these situations multiple times. And every time I've gone through this, I've remembered, meditated on instructions Prabhupada has given on his various purports or uh, when I come across something like that, I made a note. And, you know, so this is a summarized view of what we how at least i practice i try to do uh, and it's very useful um, and why i'm writing it why i'm saying it should be noted because it should be written down because when the situation happens we'll forget and then we should go we should be able to go back to some notes and pick it up and then figure out oh okay okay this is what it is okay fine okay this is my own doing okay let me accept it okay so once we accept a problem uh, half of the relief happens there you know, because we don't accept things and we are trying to run away from them is when suffering actually increases. When we accept something and we say, okay, this is fine. I need to suffer. Okay, fine. I'll suffer. Actually, half of the problem is gone. You try this. Right. Yeah. And then making sure and remembering that, yeah, no, no, Krishna is there. Oh, come on. Krishna is there. Krishna is giving a promise. Rakshi Shatiti Vishwa. So why am I... And our lack of faith in Krishna is just our lack of faith. It is not absence of Krishna's protection. It is just our lack of faith. Uh, if you lack faith, Krishna will say, okay, fine. You don't lack, you don't have faith in me. What, what should I do? Because sometimes he will show that he is still there. But still we might not have faith. And say, okay, you come in your own pace. Right? So there is no need to be, to, to doubt Krishna. He is not one of us. There's no need to doubt. Yeah. And attachment, I've seen this. Majorly, we are attached to material things. If something problem comes, what will it come to? It will come to either our property, our possessions, our, our 
बॉडी और आवर रिले आवर फैमिली राइट एंड रिलेटिव एंड डिपेंड्स ऑन होम इट हैपेंस टू एंड हाउ अटैच वी आर टू दैट पर्सन मेटीरियली to that extent our fear increases for example it happens to somebody we are not like really so attached to it say ah okay okay then all philosophy will come ah okay see you know we are not the body we are spirit soul but when it happens to somebody extremely dear to us then all logic all philosophy goes out of the door so we can understand it simple attachment simply we are attached yes sir yeah so we have to get see we should understand one thing these things will keep continuing in our life till we overcome this so we have to overcome these things yes. okay and yeah it's a continued struggle and we keep fighting and fighting and fighting begging for lord's mercy so that one day we are out of all this Yes. Okay. There's nothing else already. We are nine twenty. Nothing else will stop. Okay. Pancha kalpa taru bhishcha kripa sindhu bhishcha pati thana bhavne bhivishnu bhivishnu namo namaha. So by the way, so we won't have classes for uh, from this Friday because we are Krishna willing going on a yatra. Uh, so we will mostly restart on twenty fifth. Okay. So I'll post a message on the group. now uh, when when we are starting okay so till then uh, request everybody to please continue your daily reading hmm? so that you know you don't nityam bhagavata seva will happen okay thank you very much hari krishna hari krishna prabhu hari krishna dandu hari krishna hari krishna hari krishna okay i'm disconnecting hari krishna